Hey everybody, how is it going? My name is Stevie Wonder Kid, and welcome back to another GTA 5 car replica build. In this video, we're going to be recreating Takumi Fujiwara's Toyota AE86 from the initial D anime. And to build this car, we're going to be using the brand new Karen Fudo GTX that was just added today as part of the Los Santos Tuners update. Now, really quickly, before I get started with the build, this is going to be kind of a combined replica and drift build. Now, quickly going over the cost for this build, starting off with just the car itself, if you end up getting the Fudo GTX at its trade price, it's around $1.2 million. And then without the trade price, it's around $1.6 million. Now factoring in all the upgrades you're going to need for this replica and drift build, with the trade price, the total cost is around $1.5 million. And then without the trade price, it's around $1.9 million. By the way, guys, the Karen Fudo GTX is sold on the Southern San Andreas Super Autos website, in case you guys were wondering where you could buy it. So anyways, we're at the Los Santos car meet now and I'm going to take it into the mod shop and show you guys all the upgrades that you need to recreate his car and do a drift build as best as possible. Pulling into the car meet mod shop now, first off with the armor, we're just going to leave the armor off for this build. Next up for the brakes, again, like armor, they don't really impact driftability, so we're just going to leave them off. Next up for the chassis, going into intercoolers, we just left the intercooler stock. Really, the car in the anime doesn't have a turbo in the first place, so I don't know why it says it has an intercooler, but anyways, just leave the intercooler stock. Next up for the doors, we just left the door stock. There aren't any deflectors or anything. Next up for the fog lights, of course, we want to go for the yellow fogs on the front bumper here. Next up for the roll cage, I went with the Dash Dodger cage as you guys can see here. Now this is more in line with the Project D version of Takumi's 8.6 where it had the roll cage and a bunch of other modifications installed. But if you guys want to go for an earlier version of the car without all those modifications, you can just leave off the roll cage. Moving back out. Next up for the engine. For the engine block, I went with the polished valve covers as you guys can see here. Next up, for the cam cover, I went with the black exposed vernier pulleys. Next up, for the strut brace, as you guys can see, I went with the polished strut brace. Next up, for the air filters, we just left the stock ones on. We want to have those kind of stock ITBs. Those are the closest as possible to the ones that are on uh, Takumi's car. Then next up for the engine tunes, of course, for the sake of a drift build, you're going to want to upgrade the engine as much as possible. More power is going to help your drifting a ton, so go for the highest engine upgrade that you have. Moving back out, next up for the exhaust, I went with the stock exhaust. I think it personally looks the closest to the exhaust that's on Takumi's car. However, if you guys don't really like the look of the tip, you don't think it looks too clean, you can go for either the chrome tip exhaust or the big bore exhaust if you want to. Moving back out into the fenders, for the fenders we just left them stock, there's no wide body or anything like that on Takumi's car. Next up for the headlights, we just left the headlights themselves stock. Next up for the hood of course, again for the Project D version of this car we did go for the carbon hood and again unfortunately there is no way to match that to the headlights but to be as accurate as possible to that version of the car you're going to want to go for the carbon hood and then for the earlier version of the car you can just leave the hood stock. Moving on for the horn, that doesn't really matter. Uh, next up for the interior, for the dash to start off, we just left the dash itself stock. Then for the seats, we went with the carbon track seats. Again, this is more in line with the Project D version of the car after it received all those modifications. But if you guys do want to go for the earlier version of the car, you can go for just the stock seats as you guys can see here. So either the stock seats or again for the later version, the Project D version, go for the carbon track seats. Next up for the steering wheel, I actually just left the stock steering wheel on there. I really like the way it looks, it kind of has that classic look with the yellow at the very top center of the wheel as well as the Karen emblem in the center. However, if you guys do want to change up the wheel, I think another really really close match to the Ital Volante wheel in Takumi's car is the Sprit Basic. Kind of either or, these are both three spoke wheels that I think would work equally as well for the steering wheel. Moving back out, next up for the lights, for the headlights themselves, we just left them stock. And then for the neon kits, of course Takumi's car did not have any neon so we don't touch these. Now next up for the livery, this is probably the most iconic aspect of the build. We went for the delivery boy livery of course. I'm still trying to figure out what this text means so if you guys happen to know what it does mean, feel free to let me know down in the comments. 
Now, next up for the plates, for the plate holder, we're just gonna leave the factory option on front and center. You can kind of bias them on the left or the right and even do kind of the Japanese style plate as well. But in pretty much all the pictures of Takumi's car, the plate is front and center on the front bumper. So we just don't change the plate holder here. And then next up for the license plate itself, we just went with the blue on white three plate. Pretty much any of the blue on white options would work. And of course, I will have a picture of the actual plate on screen if you guys want to recreate the number that's on Takumi's plate as well. Moving back out here, next up for the respray, this is really, really simple, which is awesome. No metallics or pearlescents to mess around with. We just went with a classic ice white. Plain and simple, nothing really to it, just a classic ice white. And then for the secondary color, we went with a classic black, of course. Again, really cut and dry, which is awesome. Nothing too much to play around with, and it gets the job done. Next up for the trim color, I went with a dark steel. Now this actually really only affects the color of the seats themselves. And as I talked about earlier, I went with the Project D inspired racing seats. So uh, to kind of match up the color of the seats in Takumi's car, I went with the dark steel for these. However, if you guys decide to leave the seat stock, what you can do is you can go down and you can paint the seats a sunrise orange. I know it looks weird with the racing seats, so I'm gonna put the stock ones back on so you can see just how close it looks to the OEM 86 interior. So really quick here, going back into the stock seats this is what they look like I think that's pretty spot on with the color in some of the pictures of the OEM interior that I saw it doesn't look the best because the rest of the interior is black but for the sake of accuracy you can go for this color if you want I'm gonna change mine back to the racing seats I just like the look of that way better all right, so we set everything back to what it was before and I'm gonna go over the accent color now and for this we just leave it ice white moving back out here into the roof for the roof, we just left it entirely stock. There's no roof scoops or tires or anything crazy like that. Next up for the side panels, we went with the primary bump strips, of course. It kind of colors that trim that goes around the bumpers and the, the doors and stuff like that. So go for the primary bump strips for sure. Next up for the skirts, because a majority of the body on Takumi's 8.6 is stock, we just left the skirt stock as well. Next up for the spoilers, for the sake of the drift build and for the sake of accuracy, really, we just leave the spoiler off. Next up for the sun strips, we didn't do any sun strips for this build. Next up for the suspension. Now, fortunately, this really doesn't impact driftability all that much, and it also allows us to be a little bit more accurate. If you guys have seen pictures of Takumi's car, it is pretty high off the ground. So for the sake of accuracy, we're just going to leave the suspension stock. Moving back out here, next up for the transmission. For the sake of the drift build, we're going to want to upgrade the transmission as much as possible. We want the transmission to be as responsive as possible so that way it's easy for us to re-engage the mid-drive speed boost to really carry out those longer drifts. Next up for the turbo, again, because power upgrades are pretty much a no-brainer for a drift build, we did go for the turbo upgrade. Next up for the wheels, we went into wheel type, we went down into the tuner section, we went to the stock rims, and then we chose the Fujiwara rims. I think this is a pretty clear reference to the rims that are on Takumi's car, of course. You're going to want to go for the Fujiwara rims. These are probably the best match you're going to get. Moving back out here for the wheel color, we went with a black steel. Now, in a couple different pictures of the car, it looks like the rims are either like a dark black color, and in that case, if you want to, you could do the anthracite black, but in some other pictures, like from the anime, it looks like they're more of like a lighter gunmetal gray, so you could go for the stone silver if you wanted to. I went for the happy medium with the black steel. I think these are a really, really close match. Next up for the tires, for the tire design, we just leave the tires themselves stock. There's no custom tires or anything like that. Next up for the tire enhancements, we actually went with the standard tires. Now, I find this car pretty easy to drift just with the standard tires. With the power upgrades and everything like that, the car is very, very adequate for drifting. It's very easy to control. But if you guys want to go full drift missile mode, you can put on the low grip tires if you'd like. I personally think the low grip tires really take away from the car's drivability. And in some cases, they make it a little bit harder to control when you're drifting. But again, if you guys want to drift as easily as possible, you can go for the low grip tires. By the way, if you guys really don't know what these are, for the new cars that are added as part of the Los Santos Tuners update, there's the option now to put on low grip tires if you decide you want to drift the car. That means that pretty much all of the cars in this update are capable when it comes to drifting, which is really cool. But as I said, I just left the standard tires on the car. Moving back out for the tire smoke, I just left the factory white tire smoke on. 
and then moving back out of here. Next up for the windows, I did not do any window tints for this build, I just left them off. And then for the window spoilers, I did not put any window spoilers on this build, I just left them off. And then last but not least for the bumpers, going into the front bumpers, as you guys can see, I just left the front bumper stock. There really is no bumper additions or anything like that on Takumi's car, so for the sake of that, we just leave the front bumper stock. And then the same goes for the rear bumper as well. We just leave the rear bumper stock. And then the same thing goes for the bumper accessories. There are no Surikawa subway handles on Takumi's car, so we just leave these off. And that's about all the upgrades you guys are going to need for this replica drift build. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful if you wanted to recreate Takumi's car and you also want to have a little bit of fun drifting this thing. It is a blast when it comes to drifting it. I'd highly recommend you guys go and give this thing a shot. It is a blast. But anyways guys, stay tuned for more videos on the Los Santos Tuners update. I'm definitely going to be making more build videos I hope to get out very soon. Thank you all for watching and have a great day.